Hey, it's me. I've heard people ask, if God exists and there's a divine order, why do so many terrible things happen in the world? It's a big question. We all know that people shape their own destinies. The heavy burdens we often carry often come from breaking spiritual laws, even if we don't realize we're doing it. Even that, though, doesn't fully explain big events like wars, as an example, or the decisions of a few, it seems, cause many innocent people to suffer. Here's my theory. First, even in disasters that affect many people, each person experiences only what's fit into their own destiny. Each person experiences experiences only what fits into his or her own destiny. Second, every one of us, except, you know, maybe a select few who have reached a high level of spiritual purity, shares responsibility for wars and other large-scale tragedies. It's not just the politicians or the leaders who are to take the blame. Every single person contributes when we have impure thoughts and emotions that pollute the collective spirit. Eventually, this negativity, this negative energy has to manifest in some way. Every thought of hate, selfishness, injustice, or wanting more for ourselves than for others adds to this massive spiritual structure that potentially can lead to war. Wars have to form spiritually before they can cause destruction in the physical world. They develop in the quantum field first. If even a small portion of humanity focused on peace, would wars even exist? Regardless of a few corrupt leaders, many of us, including myself, carry thoughts of fear, mistrust, and separation like dividing people into us versus them. And all these thoughts go against the idea of brotherhood and unity. Each negative thought or emotion we have contributes significantly to the possibility of these tragedies like war. This doesn't just apply to our thoughts about society or politics. Even if we're free from negative reactions on a societal level, If we hold on to negative feelings in our personal lives, that energy still contributes to conflicts on a larger scale. Only by cleansing ourselves from within, inside out, by purifying our emotions and thoughts, can we truly fulfill our destiny and become agents of peace. By living spiritually, individuals can do more to prevent wars than any politician or statesperson. So we need to be honest with ourselves. Reflect on times when you might have unknowingly sent out negative poison, so to speak, that supports forces promoting conflict. Think about people you've had difficulties with. Maybe they've hurt you and you can't seem to move past it. Try to see things from their perspective. Maybe they acted out of blindness, ignorance, or deep insecurity, mistakenly trying to protect themselves. Remember times when you've reacted similarly, perhaps hurting others not because you wanted to or intended to, but because you thought it was the only way to protect yourself. When we recognize that we've also made these mistakes, it becomes easier to understand others. This understanding can heal our own hurt and increase our empathy. From empathy comes love. And with love, we build our own happiness. We gain wisdom and we contribute to peace in the world. I propose taking this task seriously, focusing less on your own pain and more on understanding others. Ask for guidance to see situations as they truly are, not just from your own viewpoint. Promise that if you genuinely seek to understand others' needs and their loneliness, 
their hurtful actions won't affect you as deeply. You'll free yourself from suffering by concentrating on them instead of me and by seeking the full truth. Consider this a chance to test yourself. Are you truly motivated by a sincere desire to understand? If so, this desire will be fulfilled. Faith is about higher understanding. It's about knowing. And this knowing is a grace that we can earn by showing genuine goodwill and desire, a desire to overcome our inner obstacles. When we sincerely seek truth and growth, we open ourselves up to deeper knowledge and experiences. I try to remember that our earthly world isn't the ultimate reality. The spiritual world is imperishable and the true reality we can always trust. Anyway, something to think about. Let's connect soon. Love you.